Hey, real quick before this video starts, I just wanted to let you know that I did stream this on Twitch. Uh, if you're interested in following me on Twitch, it will be linked down in the description. I did receive a key for this game by Perceptic, so uh, thank you so much. Um, it's it's an honor to play this game and be here for, for the start of something fucking awesome. So this is Exanimum, the silent call. I was, uh, I was given a key to this game by the dev. But I was super interested in it before they hit me up and were like, Hey, you want to play a game? I was like, yes, sure. <laughs> I already planned on it, but here we go. We're going to get, we're going to get into it. Why am I here? I don't know. That's the question I've been asking myself every day since birth. I don't remember anything. The only thing I remember is that I was driving with my daughter and wife in the car. After that, um... That's... Oh, shit. What kind of... What kind of tortured porn's going on in here? I mean, I'm not opposed. We're locked. Oh shit, alright. Oh shit, alright. Thanks. Hey, what the fuck going on in here? I see a note. Book. Psychology of art. I am the artist. Surgery. Oh shit, are you awake? Oh. No, oh, it's gonna be a ghost game. I like ghosts. Who are you gonna call? Not me. So I'm going the fuck home. The, um, the mouse smoothing, uh, I understand it, but I'm not a fan of mouse smoothing in games. I understand why to kind of create that, that more immersion, but especially with such a high sensitivity. Do we go up or stay? Wait, do we stay up or go down? Bathroom. Oh, there's someone in there. Hey, yo, it's dark as hell. Brother, what are you doing? There's alternative methods to solve a headache. Can't say I blame you though. Okay, it's dark as fuck. Like I can't even navigate. You can settle down. You can settle the fuck down. a good noise though All right, what's the director hiding this corrupt ass director I want to know what's on our head too subject Jason Mercer dear authorities this note contains important information regarding the patient Jason Mercer at St. Valentine's Hospital. Jason Mercer is a 37-year-old man who has recently been admitted to our hospital. He is undergoing treatment at St. Valentine's Hospital, but we do not have 
complete information about his condition and treatment. More information is needed about his personal and medical history. Based on our observations at the hospital, we would like to highlight some important points about Jason Mercer. Jason is a, an extremely mysterious and introverted individual. He like me. He struggles to communicate and often appears to be withdrawn into his own inner world. During his time at the hospital, Jason has been observing ex er, has been observed experiencing hallucinations and occasionally dissociating from reality. This raises serious concerns about Jason's mental health. We do not have clear information about why and how Jason came to hospital. He has not provided an, any explanation during our conversations with him. It is imperative that Jason Mercer's treatment and observation process be closely monitored. Additionally, strict adherence to hospital security protocols is essential. We request further investigation to obtain more information about Jason Mercer and his treatment. Nikolai Petrovich. So are we Jason? Oh no, I don't want to be Jason. We got some keys. Now we cannot be quiet. It is impossible to be quiet with dangling keys. Unlock the door. This chick is gone. I will say, so far, the... Oh. Hi. Bullet key. Bullet key. What key? key? Wallet key. From the early hours of the morning, the influx of patients and visitors began. However, the day started off like any ordinary day until those strange phone calls arrived. At 10.30, the main phone rang with a call from the number 2120. Initially, I thought it might be a routine call from a patient or visitor, but there was no sound. Only silence and a strange static noise could be heard. I waited for a while, but there was nothing on the other end. A few minutes later, a strange or a second call came from the same number, and this time strange noises could be heard. I started to feel a bit concerned and decided to record the calls and report them to the security department. However, when the third call came, I was met with an even more alarming situation. The caller was speaking incoherently and their tone was unsettling. I immediately informed the security department and continued to keep records of the incoming calls. We had never encountered such situations before. For the rest of the day, things proceeded normally among the patients and visitors. However, those peculiar phone calls still linger in my mind hmm this i i mean i know it's gonna sound like um your typical oh oh that's cool the handprint we got one phone call but your typical like horror basic bitch but maybe it's just because we're in an asylum this is given the fucking outlast like the random people just just littered around the hallways and everything the random patients a toilet oh is he saying toilet key yo someone needs to fucking clean these urinals though God damn. Hello. Hello, I am under the water. Oh no, not the toilet. Yo, someone's shitting a lot of blood. You are we fishing in the toilet? Oh no! All right, we're good. We're we're good, but we're not good, you know. Oh no, he's gone. We found the toilet key. The toilet demon has been spawned. The fucking toilet demon.
Yo, it is quiet as fuck now. Oh, are we in a gas mask? I think we are. No, no. The disappearing little girl. That's never good. Didn't we learn enough from Silent Hill? It's the grudge. I don't know why at that moment, but I just apologized. Oh, is it our daughter? Oh, it might be our daughter. And she said, this is your fault. What the fuck? We're burning a witch at the stakes. It was all a dream. Turn off the... I don't want to. That's how we know the, the paralysis demons don't fuck with us. To have an alarm. To pull us out of any paralysis. Big facts. We gotta find Jessica. Jessica, are you home? We don't have a reflection. We're a vampire. Confirmed. We are Edward or Cullen right now. As if you could outrun me. Are you pooping? I don't know why you'd be pooping in the tub. Some people do it. Classic waffle stomp. Jessica was changing clothes in the room. We had plans for today, but it's... Like 9, 9 p.m. What do you mean today? That's the little shadow man. Slender man. Alright, we gotta... Oh, can we take a piss? Get a big old piss. Pissing engaged. Wait, if we're gonna shower, why don't we just piss in the shower? We just wasted water, goddammit. <laughs> and washed our face. We're gonna be... Uh, our skin is going to be dry as fuck. I would know from experience. Oh no, this is the second call. Open the door. Or at least answer. Oh wait, my phone's downstairs. Why did it sound like it was up there? Nope, it's the first call. The caller was Emily, Sarah's mother. She was asking if we would come to the birthday party. We were about to hit the road. Oh, we can eat an apple. Hell yeah. I got an achievement for eating the apple. An apple a day keeps the Slender Man across the street away. I still see your eyes. But yeah, I don't know why we washed our face after the shower. <laughs> Yo, what are we driving? After taking the... F why are we taking a flashlight? Alright. 
I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't take a flashlight when I just go somewhere. Crown, I think we got a Lincoln of some kind. We're rolling in the Merc. Jessica, are you ready yet? This guy is just staring at us through the window. Hurry it up. We need to leave. Oh, wait. No, I had to get in the car after I picked up the flashlight. That's right. Are we just leaving without our wife? This sounds like a divorce. Unless he's gonna give himself carbon monoxide poisoning because of how long she's taking to get ready. Is that his style here? Oh no, we just left. We were running late for the birthday party. That's why we chose the shorter forest road. But a tree had blocked our path. I don't think you're going to be chopping this one down, buddy. Yeah, this might be a rough one to get through. I like the way that the light's controlled. I think that's really, really good. Oh. Someone was hungry. Oh. No answer. Can't trust a hoe. Can we crouch under? We 100% can crouch under that. So why don't we just run our car through here? That would work. Let's explore this away then. What do we got going on over here? I don't know why you would ever follow a randomly lit up path in the forest. Just going further into the forest. But who am I to judge? A random forest door. Let's go into it. Surely nothing bad will happen. Even if nothing bad were to happen, we're still just trespassing. We're not breaking and entering, but we're definitely entering. <laughs> oh no, my flashlight's dead. What's going on in here? Wait, what does that say? I don't know if I want to find out. In God we trust, we will make it. Alright. Oh shit, alright. So maybe about some sort of virus. Picture is someone watching. Oh shit. Oh shit. That's never good. Just hear a random door creak. Yeah, fuck no. Would be out of here. I would have been fucking dipping. Hello? Oh no. <laughs> this is open now. I don't want to go upstairs.
you know, I'm not much of a fan of this. Hold on, let me fix my hair. Ah, uh, Satan. No, it's just our little... This is fine. He's just hanging out. Now, these footsteps, this is a whole different issue. there's a lot more doors yeah we should probably go back to our car huh it might be oh I Hi, Dad. I know I haven't called you in a while, I'm sorry. But you haven't called me either, so. Yeah, we're just gonna fucking dip to our car. Oh no. We are not very fit. We have no stamina. Granted, I'm not much better here, but... If I was running for my life, I'd be fucking running. Jessica's not here. Yeah, didn't you hear? She just got fucking taken. But where did she get taken? Hold oh, this one. Oh, fuck. Don't look back. Never look back. Alrighty, brother. My dude is trying out new shoes. He is in a fucking pay less shoe store right now. His mom just picked out some shoes and he is doing the run test. Yo ho. Just a brisk midnight forest walk in the rain. No big deal. Damn, this is a long ass walk. Are we going to the Bohemian Grove? This game is actually pretty visually appealing. Like, lighting-wise especially. Oh. Jessica, did you drop your flashlight? Oh no. We found the first page. Oh fuck. Alright, never mind. <laughs> this is Slender in the 8 pages. I was not expecting that one at all. I should have been though. Oh, I see some more red eyeballs. I'm coming, Dad. We have found a house. I miss the Slender game. I wish I could go play Slender for the first time again. That's one of the games I wish I could play again for the first time. So what the fuck are you doing? Get off the wall. Oh, you move kind of creepy. You move a little spooky there, my guy. We gotta find a key. Either a key or a different way in. I don't think Jessica's made it. While searching for Jessica, I had found a house. Perhaps she could be there. Or, hear me out. <laughs> she might be dead. That is some fresh ass pizza. We are literally in someone's home. Like, they just had dinner. Today I got lost again. Those gray clouds are hovering above me, enveloping my soul. The medications as if attempting to alleviate the darkness in my mind. But how effective they are, I don't know. This frail body, this tired mind, it feels like it's getting heavier every day. No matter how hard I try, I feel like I'm lost in the darkness. People around me talk, laugh, continue living. I, on the other hand, am an observer, a mere figure existing on the edge of life. 
Even though I'm in this world, I can't establish a connection with it. My journal is a kind of internal scream. Perhaps no one will read these lines, but writing them seems to alleviate this weight, if only a little. Yet even among these pages, I feel lost. Maybe the lo this loneliness could lead me to find someone. Perhaps in this place where I'm lost, I can find a glimmer of hope, a light, maybe. Now, who's spitting these these lines? I know it ain't that fucking, that demon. He's not that creative. God, the crouch is really fucking weird. Hello? Oh. Um... I think you're, I think you're missing something. That's, that's creepy. We got a key though. Guess he didn't get ahead of the killer. <laughs> You know, demon boys up here. Oh, it's a, it's a lock. We are, uh, we are in some shit right now. My flashlight doesn't work. I want it to work. Yeah, it's very dark. Oh, you motherfucker. Oh, what the fuck? What a fucking bedroom. You got a whole last fucking gymnasium in here. Fuck. Where's the fucking light switch at? Do we need to go find like batteries for my flashlight? Oh. So I'm um, uh, not trying to disturb anything here, but if you guys are having a seance and I wasn't invited, I'm going to be a little pissed. My friends hate me. They don't invite me to seances and shit. Especially headless ones. Kind of fucked up, dude. Oh, you fell. And you're missing a leg now. I could just leave. You know, that is always an option. It won't let me go through. Okay, I, yeah, I do need to find something to light the way where I can go in. Because it just stops me there. Either a battery or a light or anything really. Hmm. You know, 
like, why don't we call for help? Or something, you know. If we have electricity, I imagine the phone would be working right now. Oh, hey. Red lights never go. Oh, <laughs> hey buddy, how's your uh, how's your head? You do not look very good. Is that a seven? Okay. <laughs> a little unnecessary. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. The second call. No, you're not. You might be. Yes. All right, you can fuck right off. Zero. Oh, are we making the are we making the fucking two thousands or nineties S? The six line S. Looks like that's what we're making right now. There was one of those on the couch too. Now who's ready to shit? don't want to turn around or look in front of me. <laughs> Sewer slide. Hi. Hi, Dad. Sewer slide, sewer slide, sewer slide. You know, fuck that, I want to turn the lights back on. There's a blood trail now. Oh, he's gone, fuck. Dude, I can't see fucking anything now. <laughs> Behind the red door. Oh shit. The fuck happened here? I found myself alone with the painful thoughts that I struggled to put on paper. The echoes of my daughter still intoxicate my soul and I feel the need to empty myself by writing these lines. Her laughter was the only light that illuminated my world of gray, even if just a little bit. But life played a cruel game to steal that light away from me. What I did was not intentional. Confronting the truth from time to time. Reflecting on what I have done and what I could do. Or what I couldn't do. Feels like an earthquake shaking my core. Maybe you can't understand. Perhaps no one will read these lines. But you should know that it wasn't my choices. But the circumstances beyond my control that led me down this path. My writings are nothing more than a desperate scream within myself. Even if no one reads these words, writing brings some relief. Perhaps within these pages I am a lost soul. But maybe one day these expressions will leave a mark where I got lost. Shit, is this their suicide note? I'm thinking it is. What the fuck? Have you seen this man? The fuck are these? I swear if this thing's not behind me... I thought that was going to disappear. Yeah. 
We got bolt cutters. We can go cut that lock now, I think. At least I hope. I hope we can. Oh, we do have a key. Can't use it here. Why can't I use that on the padlock? The fuck? One. One. Ah, 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 ah. Are each of them gonna have a button? A lighter. Oh, fuck. You're dead. That day was another nightmare. I experienced one of uh, the darkest moments of my life. My wife, my most precious part of my life, slipped away tragically in a car accident. The sound of the collision, the shattered glass, even remembering the, them pains my heart. In that moment, time stood still and everything was dragged into a sudden dark void. But the pain didn't end there. My daughter became paralyzed as a result of the accident. Witnessing her trying to cling to life every day, yet failing, shatters my heart even more. I raised her with my own hands, embraced her with love, and now it feels like I've taken her life away with my own hands. I couldn't be a good father. Every day I question why I've brought such pain to my family. Perhaps writing these lines can somewhat alleviate the destruction within me, but right now I feel like a lost, shattered soul. So are we... Like a ghost of our own life. The silent tale call. The angel named Zaro Cole responds in a deep call in silence amidst the shadows. The lament of lost souls is heard. It shines like a beacon of hope in silence. Those filled with the, the desire to bring back their lost loved ones just must carefully turn the pages. This angel is introduced as a mysterious entity existing to aid those in sorrow. Those who hear the call may have a chance to find their lost loved ones. By following Zarukul's guidance. We're doing fucking rituals. Every return demands a price. The returned loved ones may have changed not only physically, but also spiritually. Oh, fuck. The shadows of the past can overshadow the future. And brave souls must make cho a choice amidst the lost. While these calls are filled with hope, caution must be taken against the dangers hidden in the depths of darkness. Well, Fuck. So maybe the demon is like her wife and daughter. Yeah, we've been doing some kind of ritual up in here. Something's fucked. Uh oh. I know what this key goes to. Wait, what the fuck is that? Oh, it's the little things on the... Hopefully we can pull up that note again. Oh, r r r a random sheet in the bathroom. Never a good sign. Today I couldn't resist the anger boiling within me once again. I hate everything, this dull life, the painful memories, and most of all, the nightmares within myself. My doctor couldn't rescue me from the chaos. These medications, instead of calming the storm inside me, seemed to intensify it. Why isn't he healing me? Why can't he find a cure for my illness? These questions are driving me even more insane. I'm lost in helplessness. My anger feels like a natural reaction to all of this. Perhaps, I hope. This internal storm will calm one day, but for now, the darkness within me leaves the bitter taste of hatred. Five. Oh, he shouldn't. Oh, he shouldn't. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to walk in on you shouldn't.
Hi there, little crotch demon. It's fucking gone now. Yeah, he's just fucking scooping him up. Oh, that's the basement door. I'm assuming it's a basement. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you motherfucker. I can normally tell with your fucking eyeballs. Oh, spooky games are so good. So, why would anyone in their right mind ever design their basement into a fucking maze like this? You know? Why? What do we got going on in here? How do we have a little hidey hole? We do. What are we on here? It's like a fucking surveillance room. What the fuck? My daughter, my little angel, was dependent on life support in her hospital bed, and facing this reality was becoming increasingly difficult with each passing day. I didn't want it. No. I didn't want her to breathe in this dark world. I didn't want to condemn her to this life of pain and sorrow. Yet every day, the sounds of the machines tethered to her tired body were shattering my heart. The turmoil within me, alongside the pain of feeling like a parent, was shaken by the desire to do what was best for her. Perhaps shutting off these machines would do the, would be the best decision for her, but making that decision was deepening the cracks I had created within myself. I didn't know what to do. All I knew was that I wanted an end to my daughter's suffering, and maybe making this decision could be one final gift for her. Dude, that would be fucking tough, though. That'd be so fucking hard as a parent. To get, like, in an accident and your daughter's paralyzed from it, like, fuck. Yeah, they probably do hate me. You're gonna kill me. What the fuck? I'm so confused. Wait, what's that say? In God we trust, but backwards. The pizza's here. Paint auto parts glue. Wait, does our wife have like a stalker then? Or like what's going on here? I'm so confused about this. This random underground, like, basement room has just thrown me off now. Oh, shit. So I know where one of them is. Uh, or I know where like three of them are. Hey yo, the fucking the lube in the mag in the Kleenex. That's fucking scary. All right, I guess. Fuck man. All right, so zero. Now I don't know if this is the first one because it might be one or zero one seven five. Remember that fucking piece of paper. Hold on, we're taking fucking pictures of these. Because there was a little note card that was in that box that had these symbols on them. 
one. Okay, this is the first one. Down into the creepy basement yet again. Let me look at my pictures here. Alright, so one seven one seven zero five. One seven zero five. Alright, who's scared? I'm scared. Oh. Well, good fucking night, me. I've always fought with myself. I can never change the outcome. I'm here and I'll be here forever. What the fuck? I'm so confused. Are we, like... So we're fighting with ourself. I have gathered that now. We're like fighting our inner inner self. Diary. E. Oh shit, I can't read this. This was exactly what I wanted to do to myself. I wanted to kill myself in this way countless times. But I chose to surrender. I'm here now, all alone. Doctors diagnosed me with severe anxiety and depression. I'm taking my medication regularly now. I aim to heal. I didn't want to lose my daughter. Her cheerful laughter was the only light illuminating my world along with my wife's. My wife died because of me. Maybe if I had been more careful, both of them would still be alive. I didn't want my daughter to endure the pain after the accident while thinking about what I could do to protect her. I thought the silent call book could be a hope. Maybe we could have a chance to keep her alive. But I summoned an unknown entity. A vague connection was established between us, and sometimes I see it. I surrendered, eventually, to avoid harming people. But I never wanted any of this to happen. Now I'll spend the rest of my life in this cell. Doctors will take care of me, and I'll take my medication. The diary makes me feel better, but I keep repeating stories with the same ending. It's time to end this cycle and start a new page. I've decided to finish this diary. the diary. Perhaps a new page, a new hope, and a new beginning could emerge. I hope I can find a way of salvation for my lost soul. Super fucking guilty. Like just drowning in guilt. He went to all the extremes only to to fucking summon a demon and possess himself and get fucked by it practically. That was good. I enjoyed it. It was a little uh a little weird. What did we think of it? It had some good scares. That was Exanimum, the silent call. I enjoyed this game. I was thoroughly impressed with the amount of lore that this game really had. Typically when you play a lot of these uh, indie horror games, a lot of them focus more on the gameplay and the lore falls really short. But uh, this one, it, it nailed it in both aspects. So um, if you guys enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to see more, why not stick around and subscribe? Just a thought, just a thought, just throwing it out there. If you guys have any suggestions for other horror games or anything that you would like to see me play on this channel, please let me know as well down in the comments. Until next time, bye.